Hello, welcome to Exciting Archaeology News. As humans, we have always been fascinated with the mysteries of the past. Throughout history, we have made incredible discoveries that have helped us piece together the puzzle of our origins. From the pyramids of Egypt to the ancient ruins of Machu Picchu, these discoveries have given us a glimpse into our ancestors' lives and have changed how we understand our history. However, some finds are so incredible that they challenge our current understanding of the past and have the potential to rewrite history as we know it. In this video, we will journey through time to explore the most incredible ancient finds that archaeologists and historians have unearthed. We will delve into the stories behind these discoveries and examine how they have revolutionized our understanding of the world around us. So discover the most awe-inspiring ancient finds that have changed history forever. If you are new here, just click on the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get instant notification of latest videos. Let's get started. Number 11. Phoenician Wine Press In September of 2020, we got an indication of how far back the practice of pressing wine went when a 2,700-year-old wine press was discovered in Tel El Borak, Lebanon. The ancient Phoenicians used wine presses to extract juice from the grapes and make wine. Phoenician wine presses were typically made of stone and consisted of a shallow basin where the grapes were placed and a vertical screw or lever used to press the grapes and extract the juice. The juice would then flow out of the basin and into a collection vessel. The Phoenicians were seafaring people who lived along the eastern Mediterranean coast in what is now Lebanon, Israel, and Syria between 1500 BCE and 300 BCE. Phoenician wine was highly prized in the ancient world. The Phoenicians were known for their winemaking skill and wine trade. They exported wine throughout the Mediterranean and beyond, and their wine was particularly popular among the Greeks and the Romans. Number 10. Greek Poem Poetry has been integral to human expression for thousands of years, and ancient civilizations were no exception. From the epic poems of the Greeks to the haunting verses of the Egyptians, poetry played a vital role in capturing the essence of life, love, and the human experience. The poem was discovered in a sarcophagus around the neck of a deceased young woman in what is now Hungary in the 2nd to 3rd century CE. It was on a cameo on a medallion of glass paste. New research into a little-known document written in ancient Greek reveals that stressed poetry, the progenitor of all modern poetry and song, was used 300 years earlier than previously assumed in the 2nd century CE. In its simplest form, the anonymous four-line poem reads, They say what they like, let them say it, I don't care. Other versions conclude, Go on, love me, it does you good. The experimental verse survived and was likely shared orally throughout the ancient Roman Empire. In Cartagena, Spain, it was discovered written on 20 gemstones and as a graffito. Professor Tim Whitmarsh of Cambridge University found that the poem had a different meter than ancient Greek poetry. We've known for a long time that popular poetry existed in ancient Greece, but much of what survived takes the shape of classic high poetics. On the other hand, this poem refers to a distinct and lively oral culture that has found its way onto several pieces of jewelry. Number 9. Chariot Burial in 2018, Mike Smith of Milford Haven, England, made history when he discovered a burial location for a Celtic chariot in a field in Pembrokeshire, Wales. The burial is old, about 330 BC. It was a wooden chamber under a barrow mound with fragments of a two-wheeled chariot to one side. The burial dates from the Latene Iron Age of the Rhineland. From the absence of warrior equipment and the presence of jewelry, the burial is presumed to be of a woman. Based on the rich array of grave goods, it is thought to have been that of a Celtic princess. The funerary offerings include gold ornaments, a bronze bottle, a bucket, and bronze plaques with reposé human figures. The finest ornaments were a gold torque, an arm ring, and two bracelets. The torque and the bracelets were decorated with low-relief, walled algeshem style designs. The style of the objects shows influences from eastern France and southern Italy. Two similar sheets of bronze, badly damaged, are decorated with reposé busts ornamented with the new style. Since no chariot burial had ever been unearthed in Wales previously, some archaeologists were initially doubtful of Mike's discovery. It is generally agreed that the Celtic impact on Welsh traditions and culture was not as pervasive as in Scotland and Ireland. 
However, recent discoveries provide compelling evidence for a sizable Celtic presence in this area during the Iron Age of Wales about 2,500 years ago. Number 8. Falcon Shrine the ancient Egyptians were such strange people that we would almost certainly only be able to uncover some of their secrets. The rites and rituals are a mystery to us. The finding of the so-called Falcon Shrine in October of 2022 further added to the puzzle. The Falcon Shrine is an Egyptian shrine with two small consecutive rectangular rooms. Its walls are lined with white anhydrite gypsum ashlars and a marble revetment alcove. A massive stone offering table and a lidless coarse ware jar were found in the first room. In the back room, there was a cube statue with a head protruding from a block of stone, an offering stand, and a damaged Greek inscription. 735 animal remains were discovered, including skeletal remnants of numerous fish, birds, and mammals, as well as portions of bird eggshells, the majority of which were 15 headless falcons. The Falcon Shrine was named after the 15 falcons discovered buried within it, each accompanied by their eggs. To add to the strangeness, an inscription reads, It is forbidden to boil a head in here. Number 7. Kilwa Coins Our understanding of European settlements in Australia's Northern Territory may shift thanks to the discovery of a coin on the English Company Islands. The coin is highly damaged, but it looks to have been produced in Kilwa, a region of Africa near the modern-day country of Tanzania before the 15th century. Kilwa, the Wessel Islands, and the Arabian Peninsula are the only other areas where Kilwa coins have been discovered. Current speculation has it that the coins were looted by the Portuguese in 1505 from Kilwa and eventually made their way to Australia, since it is well established that the Portuguese visited neighboring Timor in 1514, it is not a giant leap to assume that they may have gone further afield. If so, they arrived in this far-flung region 300 years before the Dutch, who had long been considered the first Europeans to set foot here. Number 6. London Wick Although the discovery of the British Isles is very well defined, the discovery of a single coin in February of 2016 disentangled a significant part of the narrative. It is believed that the West Saxons took London much later than initially assumed, as evidenced by a 1,300-year-old Saxon coin discovered by a metal detectorist near Salisbury, England. Because Saxon King Ludeca of Mercia ruled for only one year between 826 and 827, the coin's face is stamped with his image, allowing us to date the find. Since historians have long believed that London fell to King Egbert of Wessex after the Battle of Ellendom in 825, the document's identification of him as Londonwick's ruler presents a dilemma. If Ludeca, and potentially his successor, was still in possession of London in 827, then Egbert and his companions either lied about the extent of their victory or overstated it. It raises the question of when and why London ultimately fell to the West Saxons. Number 5. Magdala Stone Consider a first-century Jew living in the area near the temple in Jerusalem, but too far away to visit frequently. What did the temple symbolize in their daily lives? The Magdala Stone is an ancient artifact discovered in 2009 during excavations at Magdala, an archaeological site on Israel's western shore of the Sea of Galilee. The stone is a large carved block of limestone that measures approximately 1.1 meters by 0.7 meters and weighs over a ton. The stone is intricately carved with symbols and images, including a menorah, a boat, a fish, and depictions of the Jerusalem temple. The stone is believed to date back to the 1st century CE, the same period as the life of Jesus of Nazareth. According to the Bible, Mary Magdalene was born here. Some scholars have long argued that synagogues were more like communal centers than sacred structures before the Second Temple's destruction. The existence of a seven-branched menorah carved onto the side of the Magdala stone is as uncommon as the stone itself, as it is the only image from this era found inside a synagogue. This refutes the notion that synagogues were anything else than sacred sites. The menorah is a symbolic representation of the Second Temple. The Magdala Stone is currently on display at the Magdala Center, a spiritual and archaeological center located where the stone was discovered. The center allows visitors to learn more about the stone and its historical and cultural context. Number 4. Flood in the Yellow River The Yellow River, also known as the Huanghe, is the second longest river in China and is considered the cradle of Chinese civilization. 
However, its frequent flooding has also brought great disasters to the region throughout history. Around 4,000 to 5,000 years ago, during the Neolithic period in China, a catastrophic flood occurred in the Yellow River Basin. This flood, which is often referred to as the Great Flood, is described in ancient Chinese mythology and historical records and has been the subject of much research and speculation. Recent archaeological and geological evidence has provided new insights into this ancient flood. In 2016, Chinese scientists used radiocarbon dating and other methods to analyze sediment samples from the Jishi Gorge in the Yellow River Valley. The results suggested that a massive flood occurred around 1920 BC, which coincided with the period of the Jia dynasty, the first dynasty in Chinese history. If the Jia dynasty theory is still valid, Emperor Yu and his dynasty built their only society several centuries later than we now believe. His ascension to prominence was predicated on his ability to manage the flow of the flood by arranging dredgers and thus displaying his ability as a leader. In China, there is substantial doubt about whether the Jia dynasty ever existed as described, but we can now state with certainty that the flood occurred. Number 3. Byzantine Lintel In September of 2022, a 3.50-meter-long marble lintel discovered on Greece's Lesvos would likely alter the island's late Byzantine history. The artifact was discovered during an excavation near the foundations of the Byzantine gate of the castle of Agi Theodori and is attributed to Antissa, one of the ancient Aeolian city-states of Lesvos. The lintel was discovered while excavating the southeastern part of the medieval seawall of Agi Theodori, also known as Ovrio Castro, near the castle's Byzantine gate. The most intriguing aspect of this Byzantine gate's lintel is that instead of the double-headed eagle, a symbol of Byzantium, a depiction of a castle with a main gate and three rectangular towers on the Acropolis was discovered. It is a representation identified with the contemporary Byzantine castle of Agi Theodri, which the Byzantines gave over to the Gatalusi in 1355 AD. Number 2. Human Sacrifice in Pre-Inca Temple in a pre-Inca temple in northern Peru, the human remains of 29 persons who were sacrificed and buried there have been found. Experts may be able to use these artifacts to rewrite pre-Inca Wari history. At the Huaca Santa Rosa de Pucala dig site in Peru's Lombayac region, researchers uncovered four tombs containing the remains of infants and adolescents. This is the farthest location from the Wari civilization's sphere of influence in which a discovery associated with them has ever been made. The connections between the Wari and the Mojica occupations of the Lombayac region in particular can now be re-examined in light of these new findings. In addition to the human remains, the researcher team also found traces of sacrificial practices in the animals they found, including camelids and guinea pigs. Wari was an ancient culture that flourished on the south-central Andes and along the coast of modern-day Peru, and this is the first time human sacrifices of this kind have been linked to them by archaeologists. Three of the enclosures found there have been excavated thus far. Researchers think a ceremony was held using the human and animal remains at the beginning of constructing the Wari-style religious structures. It is a temple built with clay walls as formwork and clay maces as adobe prototypes inside the walls. There is evidence of the burning of artifacts and highly elaborate floors on the top levels of the temple. The temple was constructed between 400 and 200 BCE by a group of people with the same cultural traits as the area. Number 1. Amputation Amputation is the surgical removal of a limb or part of the body. Amputation has a long history that dates back to prehistoric times. According to a new study, the 31,000-year-old skeleton of a young adult unearthed in an Indonesian cave missing its left foot and half of its left leg reveals the oldest known evidence of an amputation. According to scientists, the amputation was performed on a youngster and the patient lived for years as an amputee. The archaic surgery could demonstrate that humans advanced in medicine considerably earlier than previously supposed. The skeleton was whole, except it was missing its left foot and the lower part of its left leg. The experts concluded that the foot bones were neither missing from the burial nor lost in an accident after thoroughly scrutinizing the remains. A clean, sloping cut on the remaining leg bone healed over. There was no evidence of infection, as expected, if a crocodile had bitten off the child's limb. 
there were no symptoms of a crushing fracture, which would have been expected if the limb had been severed in an accident. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share your thoughts and questions in the comments section.